Good morning, ladies and gentlemen and distinguished guests. Please stand for the presentation of colors by the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Honor Guard, followed by the national anthem, which will be sung by USCIS Community Relations Officer Ms. Shakanya Burden. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. Still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave oh, the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Ms. Burden. That was beautiful. On behalf of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, it is my sincere pleasure to welcome you to this naturalization ceremony. My name is Lee Bowes, and I'm the Acting District Director for USCIS's New York District. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Burden. She's always keeping me straight. Please be seated. <laughs> Excited to tell you who I was, so apologies for that. It is my honor to share this special event with you today here at the New York Historical Society. Today's ceremony is part of a nationwide celebration of Constitution Week and Citizenship Day. And during this time, we honor the Constitution and its principles, and we honor people like you who have made the choice to become U.S. citizens. Today's ceremony is also more meaningful because we have some distinguished guests joining us. It is my honor to introduce our presiding official today, Mr. Kevin McAleenan, the Acting Secretary of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. Acting Secretary. Thank you. 
Acting Secretary McAleenan had a distinguished career in public service even before his being designated as Acting Secretary in April of this year. He served a variety of critical roles in the Customs and Border Protection, including the Area Port Director of Los Angeles International Airport, and was ultimately appointed as Commissioner of CBP. As the chief executive of the agency, he oversaw 60,000 employees, managed a budget of over $13 billion, and ensured the effective operations of CBP's mission to protect national security while promoting economic prosperity. We are honored he could join us today. Next, I would like to introduce our host, Jennifer Shantz, the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of the New York Historical Society. Ms. Shantz has accomplished a great deal here at the Historical Society, but we are most appreciative of her role in creating the Citizenship Project, a joint program between USCIS and the New York Historical Society to provide free classes to those, that, and um, excuse me, free classes that use art and artifacts to help teach uh, green card holders, help them study the uh, U.S. history and civics. These classes have prepared hundreds of people for U.S. CIS naturalization exams so that they too could take the critical step that you're going to take today. And with that introduction, I would like to invite Ms. Shantz to come and officially welcome you to the New York Historical Society. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Secretary of Homeland Security, Kevin McAleenan, Director Bowes, and thank you to everyone at the Department of Homeland Security and USCIS who chose to host today's naturalization ceremony at the New York Historical Society. And thank you to all of you who are about to become American citizens. How thrilling. You are from more than 60 countries, from Albania to Yemen. You have your own story, your own background, and your own religion but here at the New York Historical Society, you will raise your hand and swear the sacred oath and become one people. On behalf of my board of trustees, my president and CEO, Louise Mirror, I am so proud to welcome you here at the beginning of your journey as an American citizen. My name is Jennifer Shantz, and I am the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at the New York Historical Society. For those of you who do not know us, the New York Historical Society is a museum and library. We were founded in 1804 with a mission of making history matter. We have vast museum collections and library archives that date back to the pre-colonial era. We preserve and interpret American history through the prism of New York. We are a nation of immigrants, and the New York Historical Society has a long history of telling that story through our exhibitions and other programs. For instance, we have produced First Jewish Americans, which explored how Jewish settlers came to inhabit and change the New World from the 1650s to the 19th century. Nueva York, which explored the history of Latinos in New York from 1624 through World War I, and Chinese American, Exclusion Inclusion, which explored the meaning of what does it mean to be an American. We also host other important exhibitions and untold stories of immigrants who did not come to the United States willingly, such as Slavery of New York, and most recently, Black Citizenship in the Age of Jim Crow. We believe that history can have the ability to transform lives and to inspire. In 2017, the New York Historical Society launched the Citizenship Project to help lawful permanent residents become citizens. We help lawful permanent residents pass the civics portion of the naturalization test by using objects and art from our collection to make American history come alive. Our free course gives our students a deeper understanding of American history and provides a better understanding of the rights and obligations of citizenship. We have served over 2,000 green card holders since we launched the program in 2017 and have served individuals from 108 different countries who speak over 70 different languages. The New York Historical Society hopes to be a resource for each of you as you begin your new journey. We have given each of you a gift of a free one-year membership so that you can visit us often and gain an even deeper understanding of our democracy and nation. 
We know that you all have worked hard to obtain your American citizenship, and we look forward to having you join the future American story. We honor you, and we welcome you as new citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chance. So citizenship candidates, this is your moment. You have come from 60 different countries from around the world, but soon you will stand as one as citizens of the United States of America. I'm now going to call the names of your countries of origin, and so I ask you to please stand when I call your country and remain standing. Albania. Okay. Antigua and Barbuda. All right. Australia, Bangladesh, Belgium, Belize, Brazil, Bulgaria, Cameroon, Canada, China, Cuba, Dominican Republic, yep. Ecuador, Ethiopia, France, Gambia, Germany, Ghana, Greece, Guatemala, Guinea, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, India, Israel, Ivory Coast, Jamaica, Japan, Kosovo, Lebanon, Liberia, Malaysia, Mali, Mauritania, Mexico, Nepal, New Zealand, Nigeria, Pakistan, Peru, Philippines, Rom Romania, St. Kitts and Nevis, Senegal, Serbia, Sierra Leone, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, United Kingdom, Uruguay, Venezuela, Vietnam, Yemen. All right, if your hands aren't tired enough, let's give another round of applause for all of the countries that are represented here today. All right, at this time, I'd like to invite our acting secretary, Kevin McAleenan, to the podium for the presentation of the candidates. Acting Secretary McAleen, and each of these 200 candidates has been officially examined under oath by a designated officer. Each has demonstrated an understanding of English, unless exempt, and knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of history and the principles and form of government of the United States. Each has been found to be a person of good moral character, attached to the principles of the Constitution of the United States, and well disposed to the good order and happiness of the United States. The investigations of the government have been completed in their cases and each has been found to meet all of the requirements of the law to be naturalized. Acting Secretary McAleen and the candidates are ready to take the oath of allegiance. It's my sincere honor to administer the oath today. Uh, would you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I hereby declare, I hereby declare. on oath that I absolutely and entirely, entirely renounce and, and abjure all allegiance and fidelity, fidelity to any foreign prince, to any foreign prince potentate, potentate state, or sovereignty, state or sovereignty of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen that I will support and defend, will support and defend the, Constitution the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, laws of the of America against all enemies, against, all enemies 
foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic. that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States, that I will bear arms on of the United States. when required by the law, that I will perform non-combatant service, in the armed forces of the United States, when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance, under civilian direction, when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, so help me God. Congratulations. Please be seated. Wow. That's got to feel good. What a, what a special moment. It's such an honor uh, to be here with you this morning. Uh, to participate in this ceremony. Uh, and thank you to the New York Historical Society uh, for hosting uh, this incredible uh, gathering this morning uh, and, and to really help preserve and preside over one of our nation's most unique and cherished traditions, uh, taking the oath of allegiance to defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America and to become a United States citizen. I want to thank U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services for the invitation to participate in today's naturalization ceremony for over 200 new American citizens. The incredible work of the men and women of USCIS in administering our nation's lawful immigration system enriches our country year after year with new citizens. Last year, USCIS naturalized 756,000 individuals, a five-year high in naturalizations amounting to one new U.S. citizen every 42 seconds. You were busy last year. Yeah. It's an honor for me uh, to lead the department that houses this extraordinary agency with this critical responsibility as acting secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. And I would also like to, to highlight that the New York Historical Society plays a crucial role in helping immigrants prepare for the naturalization test by offering free civics and history classes. Thank you for that. That's great work. And I can think of no more appropriate place this morning than to welcome new citizens to our great country than right here in New York City, where the pulse of America is so tangibly felt, and only a few miles from here sits Ellis Island, a symbol of new beginnings and a starting point for so many generations of Americans. It's also the starting point for my great-grandparents uh, from Ireland and Finland, respectively, who started their immigrant journey in our great country many years ago. And in taking the oath of allegiance today, you too have been woven into the fabric of this great nation, just as so many Americans have been for generations. And that is something truly worth celebrating this morning. In the process of becoming an American citizen, you have shown a great deal of patience and perseverance in lawfully immigrating to the United States. You have committed yourselves to studying our nation's history, its form of government, our treasured American values and freedoms that we hold dear. And today, you join your fellow Americans in the collective responsibility of protecting those freedoms and supporting and defending the constitutions and laws of the United States. U.S. citizenship is both a great privilege and a great responsibility. You come from 60 different countries. I really enjoyed that role of countries. Uh, might be some people from the Dominican Republic here. I, I didn't, uh, didn't notice. Uh, and many of you have already contributed to our country in so many significant ways. Uh, for instance, Donald LeBlanc, entered the United States from Canada. Are you here, Donald? Good to see you. Mr. LeBanc served in the Vietnam War and was honorably discharged with a National Defense Service Medal. He joined the United States Army because he wanted to see the world. Dr. Eliana Chemez, where are you? Way over there. How are you, Eliana? Came to the United States from Egypt in 2001. She is a professor at the Department of Cell Biology and Anatomy at New York Medical College and has dedicated her research to finding a cure for epilepsy. Yeah. <laughs> Sin Yu Kang. I guess, I'm guessing you're right up front, Sin Yu. Could, yeah. <laughs> 
came to the United States from Korea in 2016. The attacks of September 11th inspired him to serve in the United States Army. And on March 6, 2018, he joined the U.S. Army Reserve and has since completed basic training. Mr. Kang is currently majoring in computer science at Bucknell University, great school, uh, while participating in the ROTC program. He also volunteers once a month with Project Child, helping underprivileged kids use art to express themselves creatively. <laughs> Neha Amin, where are you? Upstairs? No? There you are, right in front. Uh, came to the United States from India in 2015. Ms. Amin chose to attend Midwestern State University to pursue her dream of becoming a physical therapist, graduating with a master's degree in physical therapy. She currently works as a physical therapist for adults with learning disabilities at the Ark of Rockland, a nonprofit organization that supports children and adults with intellectual and other developmental disabilities. It's a pretty extraordinary group, and the United States remains deeply privileged to attract people like you to join our citizenship and our nation. These individuals are just a handful among, of those among you whose stories help tell the tale, tell the tale of the journey you have all undertaken to become American citizens. While this journey culminates in today's ceremony, your stories as American citizens have yet to be written, and each of you hold that pen. All of you have the full rights and responsibilities of American citizenship. I encourage you to embrace these fully. Participate in our republic, whether by casting your vote or seeking elected office or trying to influence policy. Actively engage with your local community in a meaningful way. Enjoy your freedom and respect the freedom of others. And always remember, this great American democracy can only continue if everyone participates. The possibilities afforded to you as citizens of this country are truly endless, and I encourage all of you to seize this tremendous opportunity and soar to new heights. The future of our nation is yours to participate in and mold. The memories of the oath you took this morning will be with you for the rest of your life. Perhaps someday your descendants will point to today as a day their family's American story began and will credit your hard work in paving the road for them. Thank you for allowing me the privilege of being the first to offer my sincere and heartfelt congratulations. I am so proud to call all of you fellow Americans. Thank you, Acting Secretary. At this time, please direct your attention to the front uh, for a congratulatory message from President Donald Trump, followed by an inspirational video presentation of God Bless the USA by Lee Greenwood. My dear fellow American, it is with great pride that I welcome you into the American family. No matter where you come from or what faith you practice, this country is now your country. Our history is now your history, and our traditions are now your traditions. You enjoy the full rights and the sacred duties that come with American citizenship. Very, very special. There is no higher honor. There is no greater responsibility. You now share the obligation to teach our values to others, to help newcomers assimilate to our way of life, and uplift America by living according to its highest ideals of self-governance and its highest standards. All Americans are your brothers and sisters, and each of us must do our part to keep America safe, strong, and free. America is our home. We have no other. You have pledged allegiance to America. And when you give your love and loyalty to America, she returns her love and loyalty to you. We share one American heart and one American destiny. It is a destiny filled with love, opportunity, and hope. We celebrate this day. We welcome you into our national family. We applaud your devotion to America, and we embrace the wonderful future we will have together. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America. Yeah. 
had to start again with just my children and my wife. Thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that. Okay, at this time, uh, you all can be seated. Actually. And so, I, I, after we do the video, we, we always do the Pledge of Allegiance. And so, I, I do want to invite one of our newest citizens, Mr. Uh, Singyu Kang, who is going to the podium to lead us to the Pledge of Allegiance. And with that, we are going to have all of you members stand back up again. Good morning, everyone. It is my honor and privilege to serve in the United States Army and to defend the Constitution of the United States. Please pl place your right hand on your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, and to the which it stands. One, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right, so now I'm going to ask all of our guests up here on the stage to join me up here so that we can now present the naturalization certificates to our new citizens. <laughs> 